Well, I mean, it's, you know, always important to, to know what you're working on, what you're working with. If you've got a call in to have somebody come out and look at it, a uh, maintenance technician or uh, a third party services to come look at a piece of gear, you know, you don't want to call up somebody and say, hey, I need you to come out and look at my piece of switch gear or work on my piece of switch gear. And you really mean a panel board. You might be calling the wrong people. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be talking about a fun topic of power terminology. There's a lot of words floating around out there in the industry. You know, we hear panel boards, switch boards, switch gear, motor control center. There's all different types of topics and, and ways that people identify this equipment. So with us today to kind of walk through this is Mr. Jonathan Fuller, a product manager with Eco. Welcome, Jonathan. Hey, thanks for having me. How you doing today, man? Not too bad. And yourself? Oh, just loving life. Getting to talk to you so it's a good day, you know? <laughs> I hear you. Man, this is a fun topic. It's one kind of you brought up, and I'm, I'm really appreciative that you did this. So kind of let's walk through the one line, and we'll call it a one line because you, you hung on the rim when you wrote that one line blog episode where it really has gotten a lot of people uh, interested. So maybe a one line is a good place to start to identify the different items inside of a distribution scheme. So could you kind of start us off by pulling out some of those topics? Yeah, sure. If we look at a one line, you're going to see all the different types of power distribution equipment and meters and relays and transformers that are going to be on that, that one line. So when you kind of, you first start, you should start near the top and see kind of the way the power comes into your facility. So you'll see, like, it'll usually say provided by utility or, or things like that. And that's going to be usually your transformer, medium voltage transformer that's going to be sitting there. And that's going to take your power and, and transformer it from the medium voltage down into a usually a lower voltage, something like 480 volt, which is where we're going to get into things like our switchboard, our switch gear, or our panel boards. So you'll see typically the next step on that one line is going to be like a piece of main switch gear if it's a larger facility. And that's what's going to take that power and kind of send it off to different areas of the plant to smaller switch boards or, or panel boards. Okay. So inside that one line too, I guess you'd also have like your transformers, your motor control centers, things like that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Depending on the facility and, and where you are and what you do. And like a school is not necessarily going to have a motor control center. They're probably going to have some switchboards and transformers and panel boards, whereas a big chemical plant or a tire plant or things like that, they're definitely going to have some motor control centers there to run their drives. And most every facility is going to have transformers just because, you know, a utility company doesn't transmit voltage at you know 208 volt or 480 volt they're going to transmit uh, several thousand volts across their line so you're definitely going to need that transformer and just again depending on your facility and where you are and, and what you do you're going to have different kinds of power distribution equipment so what are the main primary different ways to just dis to distribute power uh, so pretty much every single facility depending on size some of the, the much smaller little shops might not but Pretty much every other facility is going to have a piece of main switch gear. So that switch gear is what's going to be fed by that transformer. And that's going to, like I said, you know, it's going to be distributing your power across your facility. And it's the main piece of gear for your shop or your plant. You need to go shut down power to the entire facility. That's typically where you're going to go is that main piece of switch gear. There's also switch boards. And that's one thing that a lot of people get confused with switch board and switch gear. But the switchboard is a smaller version of a piece of switch gear. There's some differences, obviously, between the two that we'll get into, but switchboard is also used to distribute power to multiple different loads. They're, again, typically smaller and less uh, costly than a piece of switch gear. And then you're going to have your panel boards, and, and most people relate a panel board to like what you have in your house. Your panel for your house is going to have a bunch of smaller little 15, 20, 30 amp breakers in it, and that's going to distribute loads to things like your receptacles or your lights. Same thing within a facility, a hospital or a school or a plant. 
they're going to have lighting panel boards that are going to distribute with a 10, 20, 30 amp breakers that are going to distribute to the end load, like your end light, your end receptacle. There's also mechanical panel boards that are usually three phase panel boards that are going to distribute again, power at the end of the line, things like that. The panel boards are usually fed by uh, a switch board or a switch gear. Okay. Very good. So how can you tell the difference between them? I mean, if you're just walking through a plant and looking at switch gear, panel board, switch boards, what are the things that really stand out to you as the differentiators between them? Yeah, think of a panel board in your house. That's going to be something small and they can get larger, but typically panel boards don't go over 1200 amps. So you're going to have something significantly smaller and that's going to be your panel board. And they're usually a door in door design. So that way you don't actually see the breakers right in front of you. You have to open up a door to be able to see the breakers. And then there's another door, hence the door in door that you can open up to be able to access the wiring and things like that. Switchboard and switch gear can be a little bit more difficult to identify. And one of the biggest things that I always hear if I'm out at a customer and there might be somebody that's not very well versed in, in the differences between the two or somebody that doesn't deal with it every day. They'll just call, you know, their room. Oh yeah, there's a piece of switch gear in there. Or there's a piece of switchboard in there when it could just be a, a panel board that's sitting there. So it gets confused a lot, but a switchboard, they typically only ever go up to 600 volts and they can go up to three, four, 5,000 amps, but they're not going to typically have draw out circuit breakers in them. It's going to usually be fixed mounted, group mounted breakers that are going to be in a piece of switchboard as well as within a switchboard. It's not going to be compartmentalized like a piece of switch gear is. So it's just going to be one front on that piece of equipment with the breakers in it. If you were to open it up, there's not going to be a lot of compartmentalization in the rear. So everything's just going to be open in the rear. You typically only need front access on a switchboard. So if it's right up against a wall, chances are it's going to be a switchboard. Um, now, switch gear, that's going to be much larger. Typically, they go, there's low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage switch gear. They can go up to 6,000 amps in the low voltage side. But the defining thing with a piece of switch gear that you can easily identify is it's going to be compartmentalized. So if you know and are familiar with what a motor control center is uh, with the different buckets and the different doors, that's going to be like a piece of switch gear. So it's going to typically be for high construction there's going to be four breakers in a line and you're going to have four separate doors on that piece of switch gear. Most all switch gear, there have been some recent developments with front access switch gear, but most all switch gear, I'd say 99% of what's out there is going to need front and rear access. So that's going to be the piece of equipment that you see in the middle of a room on a concrete pad that you can get into the front and the rear of the piece of switch gear, but everything is compartmentalized. So there's going to be four different compartments in one structure and each compartment can have a breaker in it and it's going to be all isolated from the compartment above or below it okay now you mentioned something there i, I think we want to back up and unpack it real quickly you said draw out so let's just for our listeners they may not understand that terminology so let's walk through okay when you said draw out what are you referring to there yeah, absolutely. You're going to have either draw out or fix mounted. So fix mounted is exactly what it says. It's fixed. Once it's mounted in there, it's going to take a lot of work to remove that breaker. It's not easily removable and it's not meant to be. Whereas with a draw out breaker, its purpose is it's going to have the bus in the back of the piece of equipment and that breaker is going to have the clusters on it that are going to uh, go onto the stabs of the, of the bus bar. But it's draw, you can remove that breaker by using a, a remote racking tool or just a regular racking tool, it's going to slowly remove that breaker from the bus in a couple of different positions. Usually uh, they're referred to as connected, disconnected, and test, and then fully removed. So you can actually draw that breaker off the bus to be able to do testing to it, to be able to do work on it, even to replace it if, if need be, or remove it to have it cleaned and serviced. You know, you've kind of walked through the differences between them or, or rather what they individually do. When the selection process of picking the right equipment, what should be considered to say, okay, right. I need a switchboard here versus a switch gear, or I need a panel board instead of a switchboard. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors that can apply to that. One important factor is size and how much room does it take up? So, a switch gear is going to be larger than a switch board, which is definitely going to be larger than a panel board. So size is one factor. A switch gear usually can't be placed right up against a wall, whereas a switch board can. The depth of the equipment is going to be different as well as where you can put it in your room. 
Um, price is another huge factor with almost everybody is going to be concerned about price. The panel boards are going to be on the low end of the price scale, whereas switch gear is going to be on the much higher end and switch boards are, are there in the middle. So price is one thing. But then again, the application. Panel boards only usually go up to 1200 amps. So if you need more than 1200 amps, you're going to either need multiple panel boards, which have to be fed by something, or you can go to a piece of switch gear or switch board. So that's one kind of determining factor for panel boards versus switch gear, switch boards. Switch gear typically is going to have things like a PLC auto transfer in it. It's going to have the multiple breakers in it. And it's generally defined as something that's more uh, intricate and more reliable than a piece of switch board. If you just need uh, basic distribution, and a lot of schools um, use switch boards, again, because of price and size, and they don't need a ton of features. So those are some big factors as to when you use a switch board. So a lot of schools are going to use a switch board to distribute that power throughout the facility because they don't need all the, the protective relaying or the PLCs and and things in there that some of the more like data centers and things like that need that they're going to use a piece of switch gear. And that's not to say that you can't use relays and meters and switch gear because you definitely can, but switch gear is usually just more robust, more expensive, more reliable than switch boards are. Right. That was, that was a great, great explanation. I think you really connected a lot of dots there for us. So can you give us any examples, maybe where potential end users or owners of this equipment make mistakes or things that you've seen in the past where uh, I probably wouldn't have went that way just to help our listeners learn here? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've gone to a, several different customer sites and helped walk through some of their rooms before. And I'll see some customers, they've got four or five, six, seven panel boards on a wall that are feeding loads everywhere. And well, yes, that's fine. That works. If it were me and, you know, I'd could do what I want to do and had the money to do it, I definitely probably would have used a switchboard in that instance to feed different loads. And then if I needed to, I could go down to a, a panel board. I mean, they had large panel boards that had 400, 500, 600 amp breakers in it. And that was it. In that instance, I definitely would have used a switchboard to feed uh, those loads. And then I would have used a breaker to feed a panel board to feed those smaller lighting and receptacle loads. You know, a lot of times people use them in the wrong way or not the way that they're intended, but it works for them because of just, you know, their size constraints or their budget constraints. And to a certain regard, they can be interchangeable, but not always. Now you said budget constraints there, and that triggered something in my brain and maybe for our listeners as well, you know, so far as picking the right devices and the right applications, would there be opportunities where instead of multiple panel boards, like you mentioned, you would go with a, a single switchboard potentially. Maybe it's a bigger switchboard. But I'm thinking through cost-saving opportunities here. Instead of having these panel boards that you, you're, you're trying to work together, would there be an advantage of, of centralizing with a switchboard? I'm just thinking from a conduit, from a wire cost. Although the equipment itself would be more expensive up front, a switchboard versus the panel board, there may be some ancillary costs that go down by doing this. And I just didn't know, if, is that something that should be considered? Yeah, there's always going to be kind of that upfront cost for equipment versus uh, maintenance costs down the road. And, and always the, uh, the what if cost. What if I want to expand? How am I going to do that? Where am I going to put it? What's that going to cost? So again, you bring up a, a great point with the piece of switchboard. You know, everything's going to be centralized right there. You're going to have all of those breakers in the one place. If you've got somebody at, at two o'clock in the morning trying to go find where do I need to go shut this down? Where do I need to do my lockout tag out to kind of safely work on a piece of equipment? If you've got five or six panel boards doing the job of what one switchboard does, they could be searching for an hour or two to go find the right device. Uh, whereas with the switchboard, it's all going to be right there together, easier to identify. But then with switchboards, generally, if you size them correctly and, and plan ahead, you're going to have some empty spaces, some empty room to be able to upgrade in the future or put in more breakers. You can do that with panel boards too, but it's not usually as common. Trying to get some replacement breakers or, or future provisions is usually easier in a switchboard than it is in a panel board. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Now, one thing before we, we wrap this up, I think we, we always like to talk about the people that work on it. And the, so there's maintenance required with any piece of, uh, you know, electrical distribution equipment. Now, you mentioned the switch gear typically needs to have that rear access. Mm -hmm. it, it is draw out. 
So can you walk through the different levels of maintenance that are required for a panel board versus a switch board versus the switch gear? Because that may have some factor in the decisions that our, that our listeners make selecting the right equipment here, right? Right. Sure. So, I mean, you know, with a panel board, just like the panel board in your house, there's typically not a lot of maintenance that's needed on a panel board. You might open it up and dust it off to make sure everything looks nice and neat and clean on it, but there's typically not a, a lot of maintenance that's needed on a, a panel board. When you start getting into switchboard and switch gear, those are typically much larger breakers, more than 100 amps. So some of those breakers are going to need to be inspected. They're going to be tested and clean. With your switchboard, it can be mounted up against a wall, so you don't necessarily need to go into the back of the gear and inspect everything, but you will want to have regular inspections done on that piece of equipment. You've got to have your arc flash study and assessment done, even on panel boards. You know, that's a typically a whole facility thing. That's always required by insurance every five years. So you're going to want to come in and have somebody do some testing and cleaning on it. Same with switch gears. So somebody's going to need to come in and, and inspect the bus and make sure everything's proper the way it's supposed to be. There's no animals inside of your equipment. Definitely seen that before snakes and possums and other things getting inside of a nice piece of warm equipment and causing issues. So you need to have that inspected. You need to have the breakers, usually the contacts and mechanisms inside the breaker are going to need to be lubricated and cleaned, possibly replaced or renewed by services division. And once you start getting into some of those protective relays or the meters and things like that, you're going to need to have those calibrated and tested regularly to make sure that they're accurately showing you the information that you need. And if it's something like a, a ground fault 5051 relay or uh, over voltage, under voltage relay, you know, those are there for protection reasons that if you have a certain event, it's going to trigger that relay and be able to shut down a piece of equipment or, or safely do what it needs to do to keep everybody safe. So you're going to want to make sure you have those tested and calibrated as well. And those are usually found in, in a piece of switch gear and sometimes found in switchboards. Well, thank you for that, Jonathan. I mean, definitely a lot of different things to consider from a maintenance standpoint when it comes to these different pieces of equipment. I think, bottom line, they all serve their purpose. Obviously, they're all well-designed. Just making sure we're picking the right applications for our equipment is important. So before we go, Eco asks why, let's get to the why. So why is it important for our listeners to know this terminology? Well, I mean, it's always important to, to know what you're working on, what you're working with. If you've got to call in to somebody to have somebody come out and look at it, a uh, maintenance technician or uh, a third party services to come look at a piece of gear. You know, you don't want to call up somebody and say, Hey, I need you to come out and look at my piece of switch gear or work on my piece of switch gear. And you really mean a panel board. You might be calling the wrong people. You might be calling somebody to come out to do breaker remanufacturing or certification. And really you just wanted to come look at a panel board with some 10, 20, 30 amp breakers in it. So it's always good to know that as well as if you need to talk to somebody and say, oh yeah, it's in the switch gear room or it's, it's in the panel board. You could be sending someone down a rabbit hole looking at the wrong piece of equipment when in reality they need to be going over there and looking at the breaker in the panel board to shut that off to be able to work on something instead of something that might be located in the switch gear. You know, it's always good to know uh, the proper terminology and, and know what you're working on and talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much. You really helped us. These are often confused terms, panel board, switch board, switch gear. I think you did a really good job of opening that up and explaining it and really a good fundamental uh, groundwork here for this terminology. So thank you again for your time and the expertise you brought today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.